It's been one month since I last uploaded. One month since I began game development in Unity. What was I waiting for, you might ask? Javen. <laughs> haven't seen my last video well i responded to a comment where someone simply wrote make a dominic i think you may have started something because shortly after javen a user by the name of caleb said cool next video make a it's all your fault dominic but to my three boys let me tell you something you have no idea what i've been up to absolutely nothing well let me preface this update by saying the cold hard truth is i'm a guy with a full-time job a fiance and a crippling addiction to Minecraft. This is a video about what I have been able to do in a month of learning Unity game development, but the truth is, it may better be named what I've been able to do in 32 hours of learning Unity game development. And if you didn't notice, this is a brand new channel with only two videos, so if you're interested, please hit subscribe, the bell, and let's see how fast a channel with nothing can hit 100 Javens in 2022. And to be honest, I've always wanted to learn Unity game development. I remember opening Unity when I was like 13 or 14 years old and trying to make an open world zombie survival game. Yeah, not exactly the best first ever project. But this time has been different. Why? Well, I have been learning from some of my favorite game developers and leaving the video tutorials behind. In their place, I have adopted the ancient art of plagiarism. That's right, to learn game development, I am plagiarizing everything. You make it, I take it. You upload it and make millions, I latch onto your coattails and make a cheap copy with a really similar name so a few drunk people accidentally buy mine instead of yours. Alright, but seriously, I was told that remaking simple games is a really great way to learn some game making fundamentals. The third game I made in this little game making journey was Spinner 2D. In this game, the user has to attempt to time their click with the marker hitting the circle. As the game goes on, it spins faster. This game taught me a lot more than I realized. I got the marker to start spinning around the center circle, and I made it switch direction when the user presses the spacebar. The game came to life when I made it recognize whether or not the user pressed the spacebar while it was in contact with that little circle. This is how you score a point. After that, all I had to do was find a new position for the little circle and speed up the rotation as the game went along. I quickly implemented some UI, if you could even call it that, tracked the player's score, high score, added some audio for scoring and dying, and two hours after I began, I had made my third ever game in Unity with no tutorials. And here's some gameplay. For my next project I started, I wanted to add a new dimension to my resume, specifically the third. If you've seen my last videos, you know that I have worked only in 2D thus far. But to switch things up, I decided to try to make an endless runner in 3D. I had an idea for a cool angled top-down view of the game, so I started by trying to set up that perspective. Once I got the game view how I like, I set up the scene by giving it this dark vibe with the darkest gray I could render. I added a cube to play the role of the main character and started to code his movement system. I have to say that I was very proud of the movement system I created. The player has the ability to move left, right, jump up, and dive down. And when the user dives down, the cube also goes to about one-third its original height before popping back up again a few moments later. It actually feels surprisingly smooth, and to be honest, I think this movement system is one of the best things I've come up with and created so far. I then got into designing the obstacles, and I tried making a very large variety, but ended up having to remove a few after some different game design decisions. I got to work giving these obstacles a script that made them constantly move negative on the x-axis toward the player. I made them spawn on a timer and delete themselves when they got too far away. And after that, all I had to do was make the player die when it touches an obstacle. And I had a lot of fun coming up with an explosive death for the player. To accomplish this, I set up a new cube the same size as the player, but this cube is made up of smaller cubes. And when the player dies, the cube is spawned in with forces applied to it that launch the smaller cubes all over. And after that, I added some restart functionality, gave the camera that sweet, sweet bloom, and I was done. And here's some gameplay. Have you ever learned a valuable life lesson and then decided to throw it in the garbage? Like, has your mom ever told you to stop buying cryptocurrencies named after a man's dog, so instead you buy one called Elon Sperm? <laughs> 
Well, for my next game, I took everything I learned about keeping it simple and threw it in the trash because I decided I wanted to make a zero gravity first person shooter where the player can change their gravity depending on which wall they're touching. I got the idea from a book I read in junior high called Ender's Game. While I wasn't originally going to try to build it right now, I couldn't help but start thinking about ways that I could implement those interesting mechanics. And somehow I convinced myself that I knew what I was doing and I got working on a little prototype. At first, I just wanted to be able to move around and change the player's gravity by changing his rotation. I was surprised by how well this worked and it gave me the ego boost of completely misleading confidence that I needed to continue. I found a great script written by someone for implementing mouse camera control in order to be able to look around. So I sat down to take some notes on every little part of the script so that I could implement my own custom ver- <laughs> I'm just kidding, I used the age old technique of copy paste and wouldn't you know it, I could look around. I gave the player the ability to match the rotation of a new object it collided with, and this meant that when the player hit a wall, their gravity changed to go towards that new floor. And my goodness, did this cost some bucks. Once I got this working, I set up a box to act as a testing ground as I continued developing. I spent some time tuning what mechanics I had a bit, but when playtesting, I realized the game was actually surprisingly trippy. It's actually pretty disorienting to continuously change rotation while running around the inside of a box. I would really love to circle back to this project when I get a bit more experience, but for now, this is what I've got. Lastly, I went back to my two-dimensional roots and built an endless survival game. The player is a small tank that can shoot at incoming boxes. What I think was great about this project is that it is simple enough conceptually that I was able to add a lot of variation. I think that this has become the most polished project I have worked on so far and maybe if enough people care about it, I'll try to upload a build for my three boys. And boys, that's it. Let me know what you would like to see me try to build in the comments below. And please, please keep it simple. Like I said, this channel is so tiny. So if you comment, you just might be my fourth boy or, or girl.